Hey guys, today we have a 48 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery from Ruxu. This is a brand new model that was just released and I think it's going to be a game changer in the rack mount battery space. Let's take a look at why that is, we'll do some testing and see how it's built inside. The first thing that really sets this battery apart from some of the others is the size. You may have noticed it looks quite a bit thinner. This battery is designed to fit in a 3U rack space that is 5 and 1 quarter inches in height. Other rack mount batteries on the market right now are fitting between 4 and 5U of rack space. Otherwise, it's the standard 17 and 3 eighths inch in width, not counting the ears, and 18 inches in depth, again, not counting the ears or the terminals. Taking a look at the front, we have a pair of positive and negative connectors. These are standard Amphenol connectors. We're starting to see these on more and more batteries. I do like these connectors because they are fully insulated from, you know, accidental contact. On the very bottom left, we have a ground screw. We have a dry contact relay, a reset button. Uh, we have a connection that says C up and C down. This is for daisy chaining your batteries together so the BMSs can communicate. This DIP switch will allow you to select the addressing when you have multiple batteries connected together, but it also allows you to select your inverter protocol. That's another thing that sets this apart from others. You don't need to worry about PC communication and some random software package that's hard to find and may or may not run correctly you can select your inverter communications protocol with the DIP switches. Otherwise, we have the typical run and alarm LEDs and a four LED state of charge indicator. And then on the far right here, we also have an on off switch, which is recessed behind some uh, rubberized material here, I assume to help keep dirt and debris out. And one additional thing to point out is that this battery as a whole is ETL certified to UL 1973 standards. So it is an ETL listed battery. Also worth noting is you don't have to worry about going out and finding connectors to make cables for this battery. It does come with a very nice set of cables here that has the connectors for both the positive and the negative. And then your other end has your standard ring terminal crimped on lug. And these are four gauge conductors, so they're not skimpy by any means. If you buy a single battery, they told me it comes with a 32 inch set of cables. If you buy an entire rack, I believe the cables were slightly shorter. Taking a look at the user's manual here, uh, this is laid out very, very well. I've spent a lot of time going through this already and I'm quite impressed at how well this is done. You can see all the subjects that are covered here. There is a lot of information in here on safety and just how to make sure you're remaining safe while you're using and installing these batteries. Here we have the technical specifications for the battery. So 51.2 volts nominal, that is standard for a 16S or a 16 cell battery. Uh, the charge voltage is 56.0 volts. The low voltage cutoff is 44.8 volts. So they do have these set a little bit conservatively. Uh, we're not going all the way up to 3.65 volts per cell. Usable capacity is 4.92 kilowatt hours. I'm guessing that's because of the more conservative BMS settings. Standard charge and discharge of 50 amps, max charge of 70 amps, and max discharge of 100 amps. And we have an explanation here of all the features on the front panel. We have a complete pinout and explanation of the relay port and the communications port. Uh, we have our settings for the DIP switch and how to select the appropriate protocol for each one of your inverters. We even have pinout informations for building the cable that goes from your battery to your inverter for communications. And then we just have some troubleshooting in here and technical support information. Additional pinout and wiring information for the various communications cables. For charging this battery, I use my Ames Power 48 volt lithium iron phosphate charger. And I actually left this connected overnight. You can see the charger has stopped charging and we have all four of the LEDs illuminated down here on the SOC indicator. My capacity testing setup here is a 1500 watt reliable brand inverter. The battery is connected to that inverter going through this batrium shunt here. The batrium shunt is measuring the amount of current and the voltage going to the inverter. So we can see the current voltage amperage wattage the discharged amp hours and the discharged watt hours. So first I'm gonna go ahead and turn the battery on. And you heard a couple of clicks as the battery turned on and that was the BMS engaging the pre-charge resistor to pre-charge the capacitors in this inverter. My test load for this is going to be the small space heater. We're going to run it on low, which should put approximately a 0.2 to a 0.25 C load on the battery. And I just noticed that my voltage is still zero. It kind of helps to plug in the positive voltage sense wire here. So let's go ahead and do that. Now we have 56.29 volts. Go ahead and turn our inverter on, which is going to start the test. 
and we're settling around 950 watts. So we'll leave this run until hopefully the BMS in this battery shuts down the test. I'm hoping this inverter won't cut out first. All right, so our test just finished here and we did hit our target. We came in at 100.25 amp hours. Uh, there is a piece of plastic protecting the battery from the top lid should the battery be crushed. Look at that battery pack. I love seeing how these things are built. This is probably one of the cleanest and nicest laid out rack batteries I've seen so far. Everything just looks absolutely perfect under here. Let's take a closer look at what we actually have here. So we have two rows of eight cells here. They are all wired in series. Each cell is 100 amp hours. They are laser welded in place with this aluminum strip. You can see a very nice laser welds here. And each one actually has a mark on it suggesting that they were individually checked for quality. We have our balance leads coming in here. We have one balance lead going to the BMS to each series connection. You'll see that some of them do have two leads here like this one for example. There are four temperature sensors. This one is labeled temperature sensor one. Up here we have temperature sensor two. Uh, here we have temperature sensor four and the third one is up the top left off camera. The balance leads are terminated with some heat shrink here and some sort of spade type uh, piece of metal which appears to be laser welded down to the aluminum strip and then they're protected with this hard rubberized blue, I don't know if that's sealant or some type of glue to hold it in place. Those leads are nicely routed down the center here, various points holding them into place. They are nicely bundled. From the back of the battery here, we can get a glimpse at the individual cells themselves. They all do appear to be nicely lined up and perfectly straight. I don't see any bloating or space between them to indicate a problem. The cells are held together in this plastic enclosure here and there are two wrappings of this green packaging strap going around just to hold the cells in place and prevent them from expanding too much. On the right hand side of the battery here again we can see the wrapped balance lead set going back to the BMS and here's the one for the first row and then we see our series connection here. Uh, this series connection between the two battery packs as well as the series connections on the cells do have this little hump in the middle and that's simply to allow expansion and contraction of these cells. That way we're not putting stress on any of the batteries, the components or the terminal posts themselves. And we're starting to see this on pretty much all of the batteries coming to market right now. On the left hand side of the battery we can see the main positive and negative conductors coming off the battery. We have a pair of 7 gauge silicone insulated wire for both positive and negative. They are terminated with crimped on ring terminals and tightened down in two separate locations to the appropriate bus bar. On the front panel here we can see where the positive goes directly to the terminal studs. The negative comes in and it goes into the BMS, exits the BMS and then goes over to the terminal studs. On the right here we can see where the balance leads come in and connect to the BMS as well. On the left hand side here we have a bank of 420 watt 10 ohm resistors. This is for the pre-charge circuit to pre-charge the capacitors in your inverter. On the BMS connections here I do like to see that they are using these 90 degree ring terminal lugs. Uh, this is something I've not seen on many other batteries. Typically the leads are bent you know when they come off the BMS and I don't like seeing that. So I do think these 90 degree lugs are a great upgrade uh, just to help these wires from getting kinked and damaged when they exit the BMS. Taking a look at the terminal connections here, we have both conductors coming into a single ring terminal which is terminated on a small bus bar here and this bus bar is connecting both posts in the front together. You know, I wish it were a little bit thicker, however, I don't recommend wiring these in the daisy chain approach anyway, so you should only really need one of the two terminals on the front of this battery. In their actual rack mount setup, they do provide a bus bar for connections rather than the daisy chaining method. So taking a look at the other side of the BMS, I'm not seeing any clear brand indicators. I was half expecting this to be some variant of the Pace BMS, but it doesn't look like it is, at least not from what I can tell. I do see there's a model number up here, CN100GA02, version 1, dated October 21st, 2022, and that's around the time when I started communicating with them about this battery. And we can just get a closer look at the various components down here. Um, we do have our bypass resistors up here for balancing. Interestingly, I see there's also a temperature sensor here. Uh, so I guess this is monitoring the temperature during balancing. Not too much else to see on here. It does look like a very good and well laid out BMS from what I can tell. The last thing we're going to test is the low temperature charge protection. That's the test you guys always want to see. So I've got my clamp meter on the positive conductor here. I got my Ames charger off to the right connected. Uh, I'm going to use the typical computer duster spray 
on temperature sensor number three over here and see if we can get it to stop charging. Uh, so we're charging at about 19 amps there. And after about six seconds, you saw it shut off and then it turned back on. And there we can see it shut off again. So the low temperature charge protection does work correctly in this battery. The rack they sell for these batteries does hold six batteries and it's an enclosed rack with a door. It also features bus bars for your battery parallel connections. There aren't many pictures on their website of the actual rack setup yet. I have asked them if they can send any additional pictures and if they do so, before I publish this video, I will insert those pictures here. Now let's talk about pricing and it does get a bit complicated. This battery sells for $1,449 on their website with a $300 freight shipping charge. They also gave me a $50 discount code to share. All of that maths out to $1,699 for a single battery. Now that discount code is stackable and that freight charge is flat rate. That means the more batteries you buy, the cheaper they will be per battery. And if you buy the full rack setup with six batteries in their rack, they will ship it for free and the stackable discount code still works. And with that, I think that's where we'll wrap up this video. I am very, very impressed by this battery. They've done a great job and it really looks like they have put quality first in this particular product. Many of the minor annoyances we've had with other batteries on the market I feel are addressed adequately in this battery. We have the smaller 3U form factor. We have the inverter protocol selectable via dip switches on the front so you don't have to use the RS-232 computer adapter, you don't need sketchy software, anything like that. We have quality connectors with nice thick four gauge cabling and this battery is ETL listed to UL1973. I don't think there's really anything much they can do better with this battery. Even the structural build quality feels a lot better, it just feels a lot more sturdy when you're picking it up and moving it around. So if you guys feel there is anything I missed, you have any questions or concerns or anything like that, please do let me know down in the comment section below. Please hit that like button before you go and thanks for watching.